Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, my name is Ashley. I'm part of the Our Daily team, and uh, I'm sure we haven't met yet, but uh, I'm really glad to be here and to bring you Jonathan. Um, in case you haven't met him, his name is Jonathan Kestenbaum, the Managing Director of Talent Tech Labs. Cool dude, knows his stuff. You are going to go home with a ton of information today. This is the truth about cats and dogs. What you must know about talent acquisition today. Don't worry, we will be sending you a copy of the recording as well as a copy of the deck. Um, you're in listen only mode, but please send us your questions. Jonathan will do his best to get to everything he can um, and share. If you know anyone who would like to watch, they can join while we're live. Just use the tag R daily. We're in partnership today with Outmatch. Outmatch is a pred predictive talent platform to help organizations make the best possible decisions about their people and culture. Um, they use talent assessments, on-demand video interviewing, automated reference checking, culture analytics, and leadership simulations. This powerful predictive data allows um, companies to work together to build top performing workforces at the world's most iconic brands, including American Airlines, HCA Healthcare, Walmart, La Quinta, and Chili's. These are awesome people. Get you some outmatch. Jobvite is a complete recruiting software with candidate-centric recruiting model that helps companies engage candidates with meaningful experiences at the right time in the right way from the first look to the first day. Um, they are focused exclusively on recruiting software and have been since 2006. Jobvite serves thousands of customers. Ingram Micro, Schneider Electric, Premise Health, Zappos, Blizzard Entertainment, and they continue to do so and empower companies to provide an even richer hiring experience. Um, they've recently acquired Telemetry, Rollpoint, and Canvas. So what they've done is joined and created this amazing end-to-end -end platform that allows you to source, engage, hire, onboard, and retain. And of course, Last but not least is Text Recruit. Huge thanks to these longtime friends of ours. Um, if you don't know who they are, they're a candidate and employee engagement platform that uses text message, live chat, and AI to help you hire better people faster. They are the only platform to centralize all talent communication, allowing recruiters and HR to manage relationships with their talent throughout the entire employee life cycle. Okay, so we are gonna get started. Those are great people, check them out. Jonathan is here with us. Jonathan, can you hear me? I can. Okay, it is all yours. We're so glad to have you here today. Thanks for having me. So today we're gonna to talk about some of the trends that we're seeing in talent acquisition technology, and we're gonna to try to separate the hype from reality. So let's start with some reality. This is me, uh, a senior version of me. <laughs> um, I'm the Managing Director of Talent Tech Labs. We are an innovation lab focused specifically on talent acquisition technology. Um, just some quick background on myself. I'm a lawyer by education, entrepreneur by trade. Um, I've invested in uh, over 20 talent acquisition technology companies. And believe it or not, I teach entrepreneurship at NYU. Uh, love the space, been deeply immersed in it since um, 2009 uh, and, and really excited about the opportunities we have ahead of us. Just a quick background on Talent Tech Labs. Um, as I mentioned, we're an innovation lab focused on talent acquisition, but really uh, we're on a mission. And that mission is to elevate the state of the art in recruitment technology. And so the way we do that is by advising early stage companies um, on what they should be building and advising buyers on how they should be buying talent acquisition technology. And here are a few pictures of some of our team members. We're out in the market tracking thousands of talent acquisition technologies. And so really what I want to explain here is why you should listen to the trends that I'm about to share with you. Um, you know, there are north of 2,500 talent acquisition technologies in the market. Uh, we're tracking as many of those as we can get our hands on. It's very overwhelming for someone who doesn't spend all day 
and all night reviewing these di different tools. Uh, we uh, play a part in, in the review, but really what makes up our research is buyer's feedback on these technologies. So our team comes in, <clears throat> we're able to assess the team and the, found the founder's potential and their ability to build a successful business. You know, they need to have certain soft skills to be able to execute effectively, so good listening skills, the ability to build a team, to articulate their vision to investors. Um, but we also look at the commercial viability of the product. So we look at it, their, their ability to build a, a business model that works, you know, how they're competitively positioning the product. And we, we look at the customer demand, and then we actually put this, uh, these technologies in front of buyers and we have buyers that use those technologies and buyers that would potentially use those technologies, rate the, the product and let us know what they, they think. All of this information gets stored into a database. So on the left, you can see actually a screenshot from our database. Um, and and we, we have detailed profiles um, down into uh, financial viability of the products. So we know revenue models, we know how much money they're making, we know how much money's been invested, um, but really the other important thing is we roll all that information um, in, into a taxonomy. And so on the right, uh, I'm sure many of you have seen the, the talent acquisition technology ecosystem. This is one of many pieces of research that we put out into the market where we highlight the taxonomy we've created. So we've created 34 different sub-verticals broken down by features and functionality and revenue models where we highlight what these tools do. And this, this particular piece of research <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> becomes really powerful when you're trying to select a technology that might be a good fit for your company. Because we break down what they actually do. Because if you ask any of the vendors on this picture, uh, on this infographic, and this is, by the way, only 300 of the innovative and influential tools, but if you ask any vendor on this picture what they uh, do, they'll tell you they either do what you're, you need them to do or it's on their roadmap. So this clears the noise and lets you do what they actually do. Again, here's our ecosystem zoomed in. Uh, as you can see, the different Segments, sourcing tools would be everything from job boards to referral tools to e-staffing companies, even the new category shared talent networks. Uh, engagement tools would be bots and candidate relationship management. Uh, selection tools would be video interviewing and assessments. We break assessments into three categories. We'll talk further about that. And then core hiring tools would be out contracting systems and vendor management systems, et cetera. Now let's talk about some of the hype. Really uh, play on words there, but we're going to dive into the trends. Um, you know, with the trends, what we've done is we've broken them into five different trends. Um, we've numbered each trend. I like people to know where they are. Um, I want you to, to, to understand when you're out of a trend um, so you can level set and understand the, the takeaways from that. Uh, that being said, I want to highlight that there is a, a question section here in um, the, the communication portal, and I encourage you to ask questions. Uh, I will be looking at those questions as they come in. I see them here on my screen, uh, but I likely, uh, for the more complex ones or custom ones, I likely will address them at the end. And so we will have the opportunity for me to dive into those questions at the end. But without further ado, let's get started uh, on some of these trends. So trend number one, the talent acquisition engagement model has evolved. So what does that mean? Well, we're going through, you know, companies are going through what we call a talent acquisition transformation. And, and I think the core reason why we're going through that transformation is because the engagement model has evolved. And so what does that mean? Well, we've moved from what we call a rec-focused engagement model, so focused on job rec, so posting a job rec and trying to fit square pegs into a square hole, to a people-focused engagement model. And a people-focused engagement model means we're focused on engaging candidates and trying to get those candidates to be interested in our brand so they're more likely to want to be a fit or want to apply for a role. And just to give you some examples of what I mean here, so this is a, a massive transformation. You know, ATSs were built mostly around uh, the job rec model. So allowing you the ability to post a job and then track candidates that have applied to that job, right? But because we're moving from this job-focused rep model to a people-focused engagement model, uh, we're starting to see new technologies be created and evolved. 
First and foremost, you're seeing career site building technology. I put Clinch in this category. Clinch does more, much more than just build career sites, but I, these are, again, illustrated examples. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I, I am not selecting my favorite companies. I'm selecting just good companies here that can help me illustrate uh, what feature or functionality I'm trying to highlight. And so in, in this particular example, we have three categories of technologies that have emerged because of this transformation. Uh, the first is uh, career sites, uh, so building the ability to dynamically and pretty easily without being an expert in building websites, um, create dynamic, engaging career sites, mobile-friendly career sites. The next are candidate re-engagement tools. This is not a category in our ecosystem quite yet. This is a really new category, and I think more generally this transformation is going to lead to more marketing technologies making their way to recruitment. Uh, but candidate re-engagement tools, this is one example here is Abercruit. Um, I actually happen to be an investor in this uh, in full transparency, but uh, these uh, kinds of tools either focus on retargeting, so getting the information about a job in front of a candidate once they leave your website, or more effectively engaging candidates when they're on your website. So there are other technologies that do this, um, for example, Maya, um, but these are all about automatically getting the right content in front of the right candidate at the right time and getting those candidates who may have come to your website not gotten the information they need back to your website. Uh, the last category here, and this is not necessarily new because um, progressive organizations have already adopted these. These have been around for the last three years, would be candidate relationship management technologies. And examples would be Beamery or Feed on People. And as I said, Clinch does some of this functionality as well. But ultimately what's happening here is um, you, you now have technologies, and many of these concepts were taken from marketing, where you can engage passive candidates, create pipe, pipeline and workflows to, to get those candidates interested in your, your organization, so when the right opportunity comes up, you're able to get in front of them and they know your brand. Now, companies are on what we call an innovation cycle, and this is just another piece of talented labs IP uh, that we have. And, and I want to explain what I mean here, because in order to go through this talent acquisition transformation, your organization needs to be ready. And, and you know, we're going to start to see many more companies going through these transformations, but, um, you know, I'd say that the, the square one point where organizations start is, is we're in the unaware state. And by unaware, um, what I mean here is they, they don't really understand of where innovation is being applied or where technology is making its way into the recruitment space. And so they're not really leveraging new technology. They're continuing to go down the, the old path. Uh, a little bit more progressive on the scale, you have reactive companies. These are organizations that are getting pitched hundreds of talent acquisition technology companies a year, um, and they're just reactively demoing or actually piloting or even using these talent acquisition technology solutions within their business, but there's really no strategy in place. And frankly, they're really setting themselves up to spend a lot of money and ultimately fail. And there's a large portion of companies in this state. Proactive organizations, these are companies going through a transformation. They likely have a strategy. It could be one they created or one that they got help with from a third party consulting agency. And they're actively putting RFIs and RFPs out into the market to get tools to solve their business problems. And they're not you know, overwhelmed by the feature functionality bugs that vendors put up into the market. The fourth category here is active. These are organizations going through what we call an implementation. And in this kind of category, companies sink their heads down and they're, you know, they're implementing a new CRM or a new ETS. Um, but the truth is that they still need to be focused on talent acquisition technology because as soon as they finish that implementation, they do need to plug point solutions into the system. And last is what we call steady state. Uh, the, the state here is you know, you, you're leveraging technology uh, it's your, to your um, knowledge, it's, you know, you're, you're leveraging everything you can to be um, a forward-thinking, progressive organization. Uh, the challenge here is that business needs change overnight, and you still need to be aware of talent acquisition technology. And so the goal here is to be on what we call a lean loop and stay between the steady state, proactive, and active uh, category. So as soon as you're in steady state, you have a strategy and you can proactively go out to the market and try new technology. So you really need to be aware of where your organization falls on this innovation cycle before you go trying new technology. And so 
for every trend, I have this category we call be ahead of the curve. And so I want to explain why you have to pay attention to these trends. What's important, what's exciting, and what's interesting here. So with this trend, about this transformation that organizations are going through, let's talk about why. So there was a 22% increase in the utilization of CRMs at the enterprise level this year. So 22% more organizations are leveraging CRMs than they were last year. And 44% of companies that we surveyed um, reported that they actually use a CRM. So the majority of the growth that we're seeing today is coming from large enterprises. Uh, we do believe that this will make its way into small and medium-sized businesses, but this is a huge increase. Uh, likely the, the biggest increase in any technology tool we've seen. The, the next question that comes up is when can I leverage uh, this type of uh, technology? And, and the, the short answer is this is the first thing you should be doing. So you should be focusing on leveraging uh, these types of engagement tools now. Um, you know, this is how you will remain uh, competitive in the market. Uh, CRM will be pivotal to your success as a recruitment organization. And so there's no prerequisite here. You should be leveraging these tools today. And, and how? How can you leverage these tools? Well, we briefly mentioned on the slide, uh, if you look at our ecosystem, uh, if you read our research on our website, you need to look for career site building technologies, candidate relationship management technologies, and candidate re-engagement technologies. Trend number two. Matching technology is getting better due to advances in artificial intelligence. So there was no way I was going to be able to talk about trends in talent acquisition technology without mentioning, um, there's, there's, excuse me, there's no way I could talk about trends without mentioning artificial um, intelligence, but if I was just to have mentioned artificial intelligence, uh, I'll, there would be no clear path for how you can leverage it. And so I want to explain how matching technology is the clear path. It's the low hanging fruit on how you can leverage artificial intelligence today. And let's kind of walk through that. Five years ago, we went out to the, the market and, and actually every deck that we looked at said the words big data. And, and you know, that's obvious. You know, companies use buzz, buzzwords when they pitch their product and five years ago, the buzzword was big data. And so it makes logical sense that now that you're collecting big data, you start to use some form of artificial intelligence to make sense of that data. However, something's off. When we went to the market and we started surveying people that said they were using AI, uh, we found out that over 75% of companies claim that they're using artificial intelligence. And frankly, uh, it's not possible uh, that so many talent acquisition technology companies are using AI because I know um, that a there's not enough AI guys out in the market or guys or girls out in the market who would work for a startup as opposed to working for a, a, a Fortune 500 company where they can make half a million dollars a year. So that didn't make sense to us. So we dug deeper and we said, of the companies that said they're using AI, what types of AI are they using? And we broke AI into four categories, machine learning, natural language processing, deep learning, and leveraging neural networks. All four of these, you know, in some ways touch AI, but really the deep AI, the stuff that really will make a difference is deep, you need deep learning and, and you need to leverage neural networks for. Um, what we found was that only 1% of companies that surveyed said that they use deep learning or, le or leverage neural networks. 99% were using machine learning and natural language processing. Now, while I won't consider that real AI in quotes, uh, you can do a lot with machine learning and natural language processing. And so we went deeper into those two categories and said, what do those lend themselves well to? And so we wanted to understand what services those two p pieces of AI functionality could make better. When you break down the services that AI could deliver, you see uh, the top here would be matching technologies, recommendation engines, predictive analytics. These three things lend themselves really well to machine learning and natural language processing. And these three things are where we believe matching technologies fall and where we believe the low hanging fruit of AI is. And we think that the technology is significantly better and you'll start to see significant significant advances in matching technology over the, the next six months. Things like contextual language recognition, facial recognition, voice recognition, writing recognition, you know, the things that automate a recruiter out of the picture, we are nowhere near um, accomplishing and you need neural networks and, and, and deep learning to, to get um, effective. And so, 
you know, we, I, we don't anticipate and we will dive further into bots. Again, we couldn't have a conversation around trends without bots, right, or mentioning bots. But more importantly here, it's important to note that, as you can see, AI will lend itself in the short term to matching. In the long term, if we can nail AI, they'll start to see some really interesting um, automated, essentially, recruiters, but we are very far away from that. Along with this kind of AI trend happening, we're starting to see some things happening within existing systems. So applicant tracking systems, which traditionally were close to um, you know, innovation outside of their own technology platforms, have now made matching something they, they're willing to open up into. So many ATSs now allow a matching score to come into the ATS, and you can now integrate your matching technology with the applicant tracking system. They've come to the conclusion as applicant tracking systems, they're good at tracking candidates, and they're not necessarily the best at artificial intelligence. And so matching you know, technology can now integrate with the ATS. So illustrative examples of matching technology would be Hired Score or Restless Bandit. Um, these, for the most part, um, in particular, Hired Score, which focuses mostly on the Fortune 50, um, are, are integrated into applicant tracking systems. Some of the, the other solutions um, do allow workflows outside of your ATS. So you can, for example, have a job um, that wasn't filled, and that you could set up an email if the job wasn't filled in a certain amount of time. that will email the recruiter working that job with a list of the top three candidates. I'm not suggesting that either of these tools have that functionality, but it is something that fits within matching systems, the ability to build these workflows around your existing um, matching technology. So be ahead of the curve. How do you leverage this, this technology? Well, why would you leverage this technology? So we actually believe that matching systems have the greatest room for growth. Uh, they currently um, have about 12% market penetration. And uh, for recruiters who are over, overwhelmed with the resumes that review, these are great tools to take a process that could have taken you two weeks down to about five minutes. Um, and, and as I said, these integrate with your ATS. When? Well, Along the cycle of innovation, you will have wanted to adopt a new age applicant tracking system or a new uh, candidate relationship management system. First and foremost, uh, you need an ATS that's open and allows you to plug in a matching technology for it to be effective. But second, um, your matching technology will integrate with your CRM, your bot, your ATS. So um, you do want to have the big picture in mind. Uh, and then how could you leverage these? Well, if you look at our ecosystem, you can look at the matching systems category. Trend number three, and I see we have some questions coming in. Thank you. Um, trend number three, we have, whoop, we're running through. Um, bots are not doing a good job at articulating value. So as I said, you know, talking trends, you gotta mention bots, but again, not meaningful to just mention bots. What specifically within bots is happening? Well, you've already heard me say that the AI just isn't there yet. So bots are not going to be automated recruiters today. Um, and, and actually, what we're, we're seeing is bots have articulated themselves traditionally um, as the candidate experience problem solver. And the truth is, I don't actually know if they actually saw candidate experience. You know, I, there's not been a third-party report outside of a bot company that's been uh, written about the candidate experience and the effect of bots on it. Now, that being said, so I, I, I don't actually think they solve candidate experience. That being said, they do solve some business problems. And that business problem is the ability to collect data from folks who you might not have had the time to connect, to, to connect with or your, your recruiters might not have the time to connect with. This is generally done through what we call an intelligent workflow. So these systems are not you know, creating conversations. They're really following a set of rules. We break bots into three categories, chat bots, voice bots, and video bots. Um, these types of bots um, sit within different parts of the process. So a chat bot, for example, generally sits pre-apply. Maya, Olivia are examples. Um, and, and generally um, allow the, the, the candidate a new way to kind of submit information against the job. Next would be voice bots. Um, these generally sit behind the apply button, so the experience for a candidate would be uh, clicking the apply button and then within a certain amount of time getting a phone call from an automated bot asking a series of follow-on questions. 
you know, the premise here is that these would become dynamic, these questions, and there would be an understanding of the job rec and the resume to more effectively go deeper and get the pre-qual questions out of the way. You know, talk push is a good example of one that's gone a few steps further and built in some assessing, so assessing words per minute um, and, and actually even, um, you know, seeing fluency in language, et cetera. So really interesting for high volume, you know, for example, call center roles. Uh, the last here would be video box. This is gimmicky. Um, I mention it because it's, it's just something to know that exists, but it doesn't mean that it necessarily solves a business problem. Robot beer is an example. Concept being, instead of having a conversation with a wall, uh, you have a bot that nods and smiles and, 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 and you can engage with that bot instead of having a conversation just with your computer screen. Uh, big picture, what's going on here um, is we actually believe that bots is where what we call recruitment process automation is going to make its way into the space. So the, you're seeing this kind of category evolve into recruitment process automation. And what I mean by that is the tactile um, tasks that recruiters focus on, so scheduling, collecting information from candidates, will likely be done by these bots. Um, the, the, and and they're, they're automating and connecting the dots between many different systems to allow that to happen. You know, assess, maybe connecting an assessment technology into the mix if you need to go further with the candidate, or, for example, uh, getting a scheduling tool um, into the mix if you need to schedule an interview. And so how do you get ahead of the curve and leverage this technology? Well, we actually predict massive growth in the adoption bot. Today they have about 8% penetration, um, and this is mostly um, actually um, at medium-sized businesses. Um, so we, we see that um, enterprise um, will have a huge opportunity to leverage these. Um, you traditionally would start to leverage these after you implement the CRM, but there's no hard line rule there. You could implement these. Um, pretty much at any point in time. And then the category and ecosystem you look at is bots. I'm sure you guys are starting to get the hang of how we have structured this content. Trend number four. Assessments are being adopted for entry-level roles. So assessments have been around for, you know, for, for, most, for forever almost, right? Is, you know, assessments are not a new thing. But what's new here is that these digital gamified assessments allow you to collect information quicker and in a more engaging way, which means that candidates feel like they're spending less time taking them and are more likely to sit through the exams. And in that regard, um, we're seeing them, and as you can see, the trend is that these are being adopted for entry-level roles. We're seeing the revenue models change, but more importantly, we're seeing them leverage beyond just the executive level for entry-level roles. We split assessments into three categories, skill-based assessments, behavioral assessments, simulation-based assessments. Skill-based assessments are, you know, a great example would be Hacker Rank, Hacker Earth, um, there's a number of them here. Many of these focus specifically on certain verticals, so tech, true up, for example, is for accountants. Um, there, there are assessments for every vertical. Um, instead of asking someone if they know JavaScript, let's test them. Behavioral-based assessments, these kind of spun out of the cultural fit category. And frankly, we found that organizations found it very difficult to understand their own culture. Um, to be able to leverage a tool to help them find people that have quote, culture fit. So these this category is kind of morphed into what we call behavioral-based assessments, and these are about assessing candidates for their propensity to develop new skills. And so this is generally used um, to hire entry-level um, college students who might not have a set of skills that are proven through previous work experience. And so CareerSpark, Koru, Pymetrics, examples of game-based assessments that sit at the top of the funnel. Uh, last year, um, and one of my personal favorite categories is simulation-based assessments. Uh, Verbo, Shaker are examples that have uh, companies that have um, these simulation-based assessments. Why put someone through an assessment? Um, why not put someone through an assessment examining their ability to be effective at the role you're hiring them for? Um, Verbo has a marketplace of these types of assessments, so you can select 
the right one for the right job. Um, but there are many other companies that will build them custom for your particular needs. So how do you get ahead of the curve? Um, well, first and foremost, assessments are, like I said, being more widely adopted. Um, the, the, the adoption of skill and behavioral assessments um, have penetrated about 50% of the market. Uh, that's big. Um, you know, I could say top three questions that we get from heads of talent. Um, assessment is generally one of them. Um, and that's really about how can I leverage an assessment to find the right candidate for my, my organization. Um, and so this is ultimately something you do after you implement an ADS or CRM. Um, you know, you, you uh, want to have the base um, anchor technologies in place first. Um, and then on our ecosystem, you, you will look at the simulation-based assessment category, the skill-based assessment cat category, and behavioral assessment category. Um, well, Last but not least, freelance platforms have emerged to service a new category of talent. This is super, super interesting. I'm taking a sip of water here, I apologize. So, what does this mean? Well, everyone's heard of the gig economy. I've heard stats that as many as 20, you know, 60 million people will be uh, gig workers by 2020. Um, I, I'm not in the business of, of tracking the gig economy. Um, it's, not, it's not the kind of work that we do. So I'm not here to tell you whether we are gonna all become gig workers or not, or how effective that will be for our productivity. But what I am here to say is that gig workers are a new category of talent. Um, and if you are an organization that needs to leverage gig workers, your ATS ain't gonna cut it when it comes to hiring them. And so let's kind of talk through this trend and, and break it down. First and foremost, um, when I say they're a new category of talent, what do I mean? Well, if you put a, a job rec on Upwork for a candidate, uh, to come to your office, you'll likely get no requests. These are candidates that like to work from home. And so uh, gig workers traditionally, uh, you know, do not want to come to your office. Second here, um, you know, what I'm showing here on this graphic is companies already leverage what we call vendor management systems to manage staffing firms and really contingent labor, so part-time on-premise labor. Um, it's our belief that freelance management systems will be the functionality needed to manage, onboard, and, and engage, and ultimately employ freelancers or gig workers. And so similar to a vendor management system, you'll have freelance management system functionality. Now, can FMS, VMS, and ATS functionality all exist within one company system? Absolutely. I'm not here to suggest that you can't get this functionality from, from one system. You likely will. Greenhouse. Aperture and many others have the functionality to allow you to do all of these things. But what's really happening here that's super interesting is that the temporary labor marketplaces that traditionally focus on labor arbitrage or price arbitrage um, by bringing offshore talent and giving you as, as a United States citizen access to that offshore talent for a, a reduced price, um, they've moved to, to more advanced skill sets and more established roles. And so you're starting to see people from the United States on these gig, gig worker platforms. More importantly, they started focusing on servicing small to medium sized businesses. But the business model doesn't work when they focus on small to medium sized businesses. So the cost for an upwork to acquire a new company is likely more expensive than the lifetime value of those clients. And so if they continue to operate just focusing on SMBs, th their business model will not work at the current markup and margins that they're making. That being said, they've all started to focus on the enterprise. The enterprise being large organizations that they think they can have more sustainable engagements with. And the challenge is when they start to focus on the enterprise, they have to play by enterprise rules. And so, and, and with that comes a significant amount of, of, of issues around um, IP risk and how do you get these people into the, the organization um, and so 
the platforms that we suggested that you're starting to see are what we call freelance management systems. Upwork, you know, as a marketplace is, is a good way to find people, but they've actually built their own FMS so they can plug into the enterprise company. And they have a sales team associated with enterprise. Work market is, does not have a marketplace, allows you to put your candidates on their marketplace to engage them. So there are interesting technologies out in the market. This is a huge opportunity. <coughs> ADP just bought work market. So be ahead of the curve. In the right scenarios, um, we think that we'll see massive growth around freelance platforms um, as they've only penetrated about 5% of the market. Um, and, and so the, the, the question is, when do you leverage these? You know, I make the joke after you after full-time hiring, not necessarily the case. If we move to this gig economy where candidates are all interested in working short-term gigs, and that could happen overnight, then you all need to be armed with the tool to successfully hire these types of, these types of, th this type of talent. And again, how do you leverage this? Well, I would look at freelance management systems or um, template or marketplaces on our ecosystem. So some takeaways here. Well, first and foremost, technology lives within what we call a system. And so technology, um, you know, we don't believe that this is going to be, um, you know, an, uh, that, that the job of a recruiter is going to disappear uh, over the next five years. It will change, but we actually believe that this is going to be a combination of tech and touch. And so in that regard, the system of people, process, and technology will need to be changed and adopted to, um, you know, le be able to leverage these, these new innovative solutions in the market. And so around people, um, like I said, it's tech and touch. People will evolve to focusing on more of the things that, that focus on engaging candidates, and technology will focus on more of the things that involve computing data. And so the whole function, we believe, will move from a more tactical to a strategic function. Second is process. So again, you always have to, to understand where you are in the innovation cycle and need to focus on what technology you should leverage next so that you can make sure you have a strategy in place. Third is technology. Now, if you actually talk to the vendors, uh, like I said, they'll tell you that they solve either what you're looking for now or it's on their roadmap. And um, frankly, they just want to work with you. Um, but you need to not be just, you know, distracted by features and functionality and need to focus on your business problems and how technology can solve an existing business problem you have. Some of the technologies we mentioned require you to change your process significantly. An example would be an applicant tracking system or a candidate relationship management system. I can tell you, I've seen large organizations implement new CRMs, and many of the ones that, that require change management take significantly more time to implement. But I've seen organizations implement new CRMs and then call me and say, okay, I implemented a CRM. I'm progressive, but now what? My recruiters are working 80 reps at a time. They don't have time to engage passive candidates on, you know, on a, a CRM. And so you really need to think about whether you're going to change the process your recruiters go through or you're going to hire an, an outsource or just separate team within your organization to work within these new systems. Just, I wanted to talk about ways that Talentic Labs um, helps companies go, go through these processes and how we could collaborate um, now that you understand a, a bit more about what we do. Um, we have a team of experts in talent acquisition technology, um, and because it's nearly impossible to scale a consulting business when the expertise just isn't out there, uh, what we've done is we've operationalized our ability to help companies by putting all this information into research reports to sit across the procurement stages, so the buying stages of technology. So first and foremost, we have trend reports that tell you where trends are in the space. And for example, matching being a trend that we recently wrote about, you can understand why it's becoming a trend. We then have pulse reports where you can understand who is using these technologies today and how they're using them. And then also, who plans on adopting these new technologies moving forward. We have our ecosystem, which you can leverage to see the innovative and influential tools. We have ecosystem insights that allow you the ability to understand what features and functionality you should be seeing in these different categories, and then buyer's guides to help you through the process of negotiating and 
understanding what questions to ask, particularly in unique categories like matching, uh, where that are unique to that particular problem. So you can make sure that you're you're weeding out the, the technology solutions that don't make sense for organization, so on and so forth. We keep going all the way into helping you operationalize these technologies within your business. We, we also, to make the research custom, have a layer of what we call decision support on top of our research, and that includes analyst hours. So once you finish reading the research report, you can meet with an analyst, and we will help you understand um, you know, the, how this particular technology applies to your business, understanding your tech stack. Um, we package this all up into what we call advisory services. It's a membership that you get access to continuing education, decision support, and collaboration, the ability to communicate with others. So uh, high level, we, we, would be op we, we are open to doing um, some tactical support, so assessing your tech stack, et cetera, but this is Topic Lab, um, and so we do look forward to um, finding ways to engage and work with you further uh, if you are interested in, 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 in learning more about how talent acquisition technology can help your business. As I promised, um, we are leaving room here at the end for questions. Um, if you haven't asked your question, uh, please do. Um, I will dive in right now to see what we have here. Give me one second. Um, the, the question around um, ad recruits URL is abrecruits.com, adrecruits.com. Cost of our assessment service, let's talk offline um, rather than having that conversation here. We really want this to be informative for everybody um, and not a sales pitch. I'm, you know, I've demoed probably 2,500 um, technologies myself over the course of the last five years. So to the extent that you guys have questions about a technology that wasn't mentioned, or want to learn more about a specific technology, I am free and available right now to address them. Um, and I, I'm not bashful if I, if I haven't heard of it. Is there anybody who has a technology that they're looking at um, that they, they're not sure about or they want to learn more about? Ashley, I might. Um, hand it over to you if we don't have any other questions. Okay, okay, I'm here. So if anyone oh. does have questions, if they come up with questions at a later date, am I welcome to send those over to you? You are. And actually, I see one here, Spark Hire, a video interviewing technology platform. Oh, I get you here. Um, so why would you use a video interviewing technology platform? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, first and foremost, people generally will use Skype, right, for video interviewing. But what you're missing with Skype is two things. One, you can't record a Skype video so easily. Um, and, and by being able to record a Skype video, um, you know, you get the added ability of having more than one person watch that video. Um, second, many of the new video interviewing technologies like Spark Hire, HireView, WePow, uh, there are numbers of them, um, allow you the ability to have recruiters rate each video or each candidate. Um, this is a fairly commoditized category. Uh, higher view has the most market share. It's also one of the more expensive tools, um, but it, it, it's, you know, something you should be looking at um, if you want to save money on not having candidates have to come to your office, meet people virtually. Um, you know, it's definitely something you should pay attention to. Another question here is, what's the candidate's typical reaction to a video, do they complain that it's impersonal? Um, you know, depends. Um, you know, the other added benefit that I didn't mention is that video interviewing, um, you know, technologies allow you to, in some cases, have a mobile solution that does not require a login like a Skype, so you can do it all through a link sent through an email, so you don't have to log into a system like Skype or download it. And this, I've seen this work with, for example, truck drivers who you know, an organization we were working with were hiring and they didn't have the ability to download Skype and so a web-based solution works great for them. Um, I don't have data on the typical reaction to the candidate experience around video interviewing. Um, you know, my, my guess is it, it shouldn't affect the, the uh, process too immensely. Um, and some, I've actually um, tested a number of these solutions and they're pretty slick. So, um, you know, definitely something worth looking at. 
And I, I believe WePal um, is owned by Outmatch now, who is a sponsor. So I think Outmatch has a video interview solution. Yes, yes. I don't see any other questions yet. We're not okay, seeing I, any more come in. I could add one other thing. Some of the video interviewing solutions like HireView have built on assessing technologies that use artificial intelligence to assess facial movements, and they could start to determine whether you're lying, telling the truth, happy, sad, excited, and that's HireView, H-R-I. B U E. Actually, well, I think is... that's, that's all we got. Okay, well, I think that's it. I mean, does anyone have anything else before we go? Two more seconds. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for being on here today. Um, we will. Like I said, we'll have a recording of this video for everyone, as well as a copy of the slide deck. So please keep your eye on your emails for that. Um, if you have any additional questions, just shoot them over to us directly and we'll make sure Jonathan receives those. It looks like we may have a couple more comments. Whoop, you've got a message coming in from the outside, Jonathan. So you might wanna uh, keep your eye on that in LinkedIn. All right, thank you guys so very much and uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for having Bye. me. Thank you, Jonathan. Have a wonderful day. Bye everybody.